they finally came up with guidelines. We're no longer uh, recruiting uh, foreign students. So guys, welcome to the Locker Room Talk Show. And we are here with none other than, no, this guy has um, no need for any introduction. But let me get you his uh, credentials first. He's a sports columnist for the Manila Times. Uh, former sports writer for Yahoo Philippines. And of course, a former colleague and color commentator for ABS-CBN Sports. A former assistant coach at Gilas Filipinas. A PBA radio commentator. And currently team manager of the San Bedra Red Lions and proud member of the Manny V. Pangilinan or MVP group. And of course, a pet lover. Please welcome, this is a rare combination, Coach Jude Roque. Hi, Coach. Hi, Coach. Hello. Welcome, Coach. Hello. Welcome, Coach. Thank you very much for uh, taking the time out uh, to speak with us. So, Thank Coach, you. I'm uh, I'm happy to be here. Hello, Mike. Long time no see. Long time no see. <laughs> Coach Jude Roque and team manager. <laughs> so, Coach, um, I heard and read somewhere that you've been advocating a coaching project. Can you tell us uh, more about that advocacy? Uh, it's it's very recent. Um, it, it hasn't been really launched properly. It's it's not it's not a big project. Uh, I just uh, because of the pandemic, you know, we had a, a lot of time uh, at home uh, watching a lot of videos online, and then I just thought that. Uh, Maybe since uh, we're not allowed to work out yet, maybe we can do some some um, coaching tips to aspiring coaches or or young coaches through through videos or through Facebook. That's why I recently uh, opened a Facebook page, basically for that, just to to put in some basketball contents, any anything about basketball really that uh, could help the young coaches kasi um, a lot of these young coaches also were displaced because of the pandemic. A lot of them lost their jobs. So to be able to to be productive, I think that uh, it's it's a good thing to to give them you know some contents to to study while they're waiting for their next job. So, tayo naman, we're all hoping that uh, next year will be better, that uh, slowly we'll get back to normal. So, we're optimistic that they will get their jobs back soon. But while waiting for that, it's, it's best that they, you know, that they uh, learn a few things that they can apply whenever they get a job. So, this face, new Facebook page, Coach, uh, Coach Jude, uh, I just put in some, you know, different contents like uh, videos of plays, uh, drills, mga ganyan, mm-hmm. and uh, some some uh, inspirational messages from popular coaches. Yung mga ganyan lang naman, we're, we just started eh, wala pang one month. And I'm hoping that uh, if, if I get a lot of followers, uh, especially from coaches, from coaches groups, that maybe by January I can also uh, do like a, a a vlog, wherein uh, I can uh, create video contents like drills. For example, if we're allowed not to work out in San Beda, I can maybe um, share a few of the drills that we're doing uh, for the coaches and for anybody who's uh, interested in in basketball. Yun lang naman, but it's nothing. It's nothing grand. It's not. Uh, it's not a coaching seminar. It's nothing like that. It's just free, free content for those who want. Parang ganun lang. Yeah, yeah I'm, actually, I'm I sure, think. Co- yeah, I'm sure this is going to blossom into something else. Is this? Are you? Do you plan to incorporate some of your Gilas experience into the program? Yes, of course, of course. Some of the things that I learned from. From my three years with Gilas, that's part of the of the plan to share some of the drills, some of the experiences, ganyan, because uh, it will help. Because yun yun stint ko with Gilas, it's it's uh, 
it's a special experience eh. it's not it's not uh something that's normal that you get to to spend three years of your of your life with uh with a group of people you travel together for like six times a year you stay in a hotel so it's a very different setup from the normal coaching job where in diba after practice you go home you see each other the next day na lang or during the games pero ito we're together all the time eh parang we're living together so we also gain a lot of uh, uh new learnings from that especially at a time like this like uh they tried in the PBA with the bubble tournament diba so parang it's a very similar setup eh diba magkakasama kayo in a hotel you, you know you see each other almost uh for the entire two months or three months no so i think you you gain something from that too and if this is going to be a normal thing uh we can anticipate kasi that even by next year probably yung mga tournaments baka wala pang audience eh. so it might yeah. be more of a bubble setup so baka makatulong yung ibang experiences ko from from Gilas so yeah that's part of the that's part of the plan so um that's interesting you mentioned Gilas so i know they just played recently and um and uh, one of our Sanbella players was actually able to play on the second game. So you mentioned like the pandemic in the Philippines and you know, we're here in the US so we're um, familiar with how it's working here. So you mentioned the bubble in the PBA. How, does it, how did it work like with the Kilas? And then now you mentioned the, the NCAA UAP. Can you maybe enlighten us a little bit or how that's working there in the Philippines? Um, I think the PBA uh, bubble was uh, was successful or is successful because it's still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, tonight is Game Four of the PBA final, so they had uh, they had one issue wherein one referee tested positive while inside the bubble, mm-hmm. so they had to they had to temporarily stop the tournament and then mm-hmm. test everybody. But apparently, it was a a, uh, a wrong result because after the after another round of testing, the the same people uh, tested negative. So yeah. so it the tournament was um, was stopped for a few days lang naman or a week, sure. and then they they continued with it. So I think it's pretty successful, uh, and then. Uh, other teams like Gilas, they also went into a bubble training, and then there's also another professional league. It's a new league. It's a three-on-three league uh, organized by uh, a big company here, Yun Chooks to Go. Uh, they also held uh, like a one or two-week tournament inside the bubble. Successful, mm-hmm. naman. So, mm-hmm. of course. Uh, the model is the NBA. Eh. Everything naman is, ano, is uh, parang it all starts there in the US. Whatever works over there, we mm-hmm. try to do it here. So, mm-hmm. so, so far, I think yung PBA, uh, it might be over this next week. And uh, so far, it's been a success. So, I think, I think it's going to be something that we will do more next year. I just don't know if the NCAA and the UAAP will do that kasi mm-hmm. amateur eh. right mm-hmm. now kasi yung government doesn't allow amateur sports mm-hmm. amateur contact sports mm-hmm. to have any activities whether it's just training or tournament bawal pa so I don't know but let's see maybe uh, pag kami mga vaccines na Maybe mm-hmm. they'll yeah. allow like a bubble tournament for the mm-hmm. for the college leagues. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I'm gonna jump off topic, but since you mentioned about the the quarantine stuff, so I, I think you were able to propose something to the board or to a s- sports league that you about your quarantine regulations. Um actually uh, about July or June, because we wanted to practice yung San Beda. Uh, yeah. We wanted to do bubble training. But uh, of course, we had to seek clearance from the government if they're going to allow us. Because 
uh, they strictly said na bawal. If it's amateur, it's bawal. So we're not mm-hmm. allowed to train. Yeah. And then, uh, so I wrote them a letter. I explained to them that uh, how we're, we plan to do the bubble training so that they can see if it's safe. But they replied after, I think, uh, a month. No, the, uh, It's a letter directed to the DOH, to the Department of Health. Kasi sila yung leading government uh, agency in charge of this pandemic. Eh. So they replied that they said uh, they cannot allow us since uh, pagka-amateur contact sport, any sport that is amateur and contact sport, uh, they cannot allow... Uh, during that time, no, while we're still under, ano pa nun kasi, we're under uh, a strict community quarantine. Mm-hmm. But later on, sabi nila, when things get better, that uh, maybe they can allow us. So, um, the problem was, during that time already, a lot of schools were starting to to... Um, to close down their sports program. So a lot of uh, coaches and uh, and their staff are losing their jobs. So sabi ko, if this goes on for like eight months, mm-hmm. kasi at the time, parang ano pa lang eh, five yeah. months pa lang eh. So sabi ko, if this goes to eight months up to a year, Maraming mga wala ng trabaho and uh, I was also concerned about our own staff syempre mm-hmm. we'll never know diba kasi syempre even the the enrollment is affected eh sa schools mm-hmm. So that's why I I made a proposal yun nga yung binanggit ni Mike kanina I made a proposal where where maybe we can hold workouts without body contact Kasi ang concern nung ano, di ba sinabi nga nila, basta amateur contact sports bawal because ga, there's contact, body contact. So, I made the proposal we're in, if they could allow us to to hold tra- uh, workouts without body contact, then that will still be good for us because we can still work out and of mm-hmm. course, we can keep our jobs. Kasi we're yeah. doing something, eh, di ba? If they allow us even just three times a week, the okay na rin yun for us. So if the concern is just uh, yung no contact, we can do that. Eh. We can do individual skills. We can do conditioning drills without having to to be close to each other. We can maintain a certain physical distance mm-hmm. naman. Eh. Yeah. So that's my proposal, which I sent directly to the, again, to the Department of Health. Mm-hmm. Um... And then what happened, I think uh, the proposal somehow helped also because uh, after about two weeks from the submission of the proposal, um, the government said that they're going to create like a committee to, to talk about how, how college basketball training can be done uh, safely. So they created a committee. They got representatives from the UAAP, from the NCAA, from the Philippine Sports Commission, uh, from other different uh, organizations so that they can sit down and talk about how we can safely train. So I think they also um, studied my proposal if they can use it. And then after about a month, from that uh, from the formation of that uh, committee they finally came up with guidelines which was approved by the by the department of education naman kasi kami kasi were under the department of education eh. mm-hmm. and and also the PSC you no know, we're not under the kung under lang tayo kasi sa games and amusement board yung gab which is which uh, parang it oversees mga professional sports. Mm-hmm. It would have been easier because si chairman is my batchmate eh. Sa San Beda, mm-hmm. si Baham, Baham Mitra. No? So, mm-hmm. syempre, it's easier to to make requests. But we're not under them because we're not professional. We're under the Department of Education yeah. and the Philippine Sports Commission. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they... they uh, I understand they have to be careful 
Uh, but finally, they were able to come up nga with guidelines. Mm. However, uh, the the last signatory kasi, the last, uh, kumbaga, the final approval will should come from the IATF, which is the Interagency um, Task Force in charge of the pandemic. Mm. So, pero until now, they haven't signed. Yun yung naging problem. So, when they announced that the the guidelines were ready, in fact, there was a big press conference. It came out in the news na malapit na yung college basketball training na payagan. Nag-prepare na ako. I, I prepared for uh, for the things that we need to do for a bubble training. Eh kaya lang, without the final signature of the IATF, we could not proceed. Eh tapos inabot na tayo ng December. So I told the players, I informed them, it's very unlikely that we will be training na this December. So <laughs> hopefully, mapirmahan yung guidelines ng IATF so that we could start by January. So yun yung kwento nun, yun about the proposal na binanggit ni Mike. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, thanks for clarifying. Uh, before uh, we proceed, uh, we would like to, uh, to thank our sponsors. This talk show is made possible by uh, Top Digital Studio, a digital marketing agency here in Southern California. Just go to topdigitalstudio.com to learn more about how video creatives are done right. And you can also watch uh, our episodes Every Friday at 4 p.m. at my Balits, that's with a Z, mybalits.com. So, uh, anything, uh, any more questions, Art, for uh, Kosti? No, actually, he said a lot of, uh, you know, uh, gave a lot, of, uh, a lot of information that we didn't know about. And also, like, from the very start when he talked about the coaching, I want to make a comment on that, that I think that's a very good idea that, um, it's going to help a lot of people. For me, I have two kids who plays basketball, and sometimes I want to help, you know, like coaching. They, they would ask volunteers at our school, but I don't know how to coach, you know. I, I know, like, <laughs> I know how to play it, but I don't know, like, you know, what to do. You know where to go. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I'll probably. I, I, you know where to go. Yeah. I can coach you. I can coach the coach. <laughs> okay, that's good. Well, Coach Jude can coach you, so you can yeah, coach me. <laughs> well, this is good because uh, it's, it's a uh, Facebook group, right? On on your Facebook page, yes, Coach. It's, so it's called Coach page, Jude. Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, we'll, I actually. We'll uh, yeah, I actually uh, um, saw a few of your um, posts there, and it's it's very um, informative, very interesting. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to to ask, because I know, um, you know, having been uh, obviously San Beda, we're all uh, Bedans here, and I played way back when, um, the imports were a big part recently, and then I know um, there's no more imports in the NCAA, and um, then I also heard something about UST players uh, going to Letran. Can you speak a little bit about about that? Um, you know, granted that COVID uh, hopefully eventually will will go away and and things will somewhat go back to normal. Yes. Um, well, first of all, about the uh, the foreign players in the NCAA, uh, you're right that uh, the NCAA now has banned uh, foreign student athletes from playing in the NCAA in 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 all sports. So, which means that uh, starting in the next tournament, we won't be seeing any more uh, foreign uh, student athletes in the NCAA. This, this rule was actually set uh, way back 2013, but uh, now is the execution. So, so this is the reason why um, we're no longer uh, recruiting uh, foreign students to play for our team. So we're now uh, trying to recruit local players now, those that have uh, Philippine passports. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, that's, that's crucial when we try to find um, candidates from the States or from Canada because uh, now uh, it's going to require Philippine passport and the uh, Certificate of Recognition as a Philippine citizen. Oh, just one quick question about like the Filipino passport. How about if they get naturalized? Yeah, that's a good question. No, mm -hmm. uh, because in the 
in the UAAP right now, I heard that uh, that their rule says that for as long as the player is uh, Filipino, regardless of how he got the citizenship, mm -hmm. that he can play as a local. But mm -hmm. in the NCAA, it's different. It's uh, specific oh. that you have to have Filipino blood. So mm -hmm. naturalization is not an option for foreign uh, people to play in the NCAA. So that's where the difference lies between the UAAP and the NCAA. So, so I can imagine, um, so you have to have Filipino blood and, and I'm assuming you also have to have dual citizenship. Uh, if you're from the U.S., you also have to have a Philippine citizenship, obviously, right? Because you mentioned um, yes. Philippine passport. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Is yes, that something that that's, can be easily um, obtained? So let's say somebody is a Phil M here in the U.S., doesn't have um, dual citizenship, but they have Filipino blood. Is that something that they can obtain relatively easily? Um, it, it depends on it depends on their situation because uh, it's easy if they were if if during the time that they were born, um, their Filipino parents or at least one of them is still a Filipino citizen. Uh, but if they were born. Uh, when when their Filipino parents have already converted to to an American or a Canadian uh, citizen, mm -hmm. it becomes a bit tough because they need to. Uh, there are certain provisions in the rule uh, that makes it uh, very tough. That's why <clears throat> there have been uh, a lot of cases wherein we can clearly see that the kid is Filipino, but they're not. Mm -hmm given Filipino citizenship because yeah. of this certain provision. So uh, it's quite difficult, but for for kids that are 17 years old or younger, it becomes easier. Mm -hmm. But once they get to 18 and older, and then they were born with already American parents, mm -hmm. it's hard. It's very hard. This is why when you get to talk to some parents with potential um, kids in basketball, while they're young, you you advise them already to apply for dual. Mm -hmm. Anyway, they don't lose any any of the American privileges. Eh? Yeah. Some yeah. some people mm -hmm. think that when they get a dual citizenship, that they lose some of the benefits. No, eh? no. in fact, you gain. You yeah. gain. You don't lose anything. So. If you can talk to parents while their kids are below 17, better oh. apply already for dual. It helps a lot. So that's so another uh, yeah. hurdle that you have to consider when you're recruiting a Phil M, obviously. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we've had cases before that uh, that were able to, to almost recruit players, but they couldn't get Philippine uh, citizenship mm -hmm. because so of that, certain problems. Yeah. So... Some of them pa, some of them pa, uh, you know, they lost their parents already, so it's mm, hard to prove yeah. because the documents mm -hmm. are gone. Yung mga ganon cases, so it's mm -hmm. it's really very difficult. Unless maybe they know somebody from the embassy that can help them, but it, mm -hmm. if not, it's it's very difficult. Eh. Yeah. So that but naturalize more in your parents to become citizen Filipino stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And well, even even the the process of naturalization that's quite yeah. that's even tougher because you have to go through the the oh, House of Representatives, the by the Senate, time you're over twenty five oh. you can't play anymore. <laughs> Wala na. Oh, especially here that takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Coach, uh, I'm going to take you uh, through a uh, memory lane and I'm probably going to drive a little wedge up to your chest. So I'm going to talk about uh, NCAA season 85, uh, 95. So in that uh, season, San Beda was favored, I, I guess, and then it was uh, first in the standings. And then uh, Letran went through a two-step ladder tournament before landing the final second slot. I'm oh. correct, right? So. Yep. In the finals, Latran won game one, San Beda won game two, so Tiro was tied. And Letran won by a hairline. 
and we eventually won the championship. So it was actually a battle. So could you take us through that process of, or the story of how that tournament or that series went through? Yeah, uh, well, obviously, the our performance in the finals uh, was not the same as our performance during the the elimination round where we swept we swept the elimination round which is why uh um we had that incentive of uh, of going straight to the finals and waiting who we were going to go up against um i guess there there are several factors that uh, that that um, we saw as possible reasons for the setback. But I guess it all boils down to the maturity of uh, the team because actually last year, we had a very young team. Uh, if you notice, our starting point guard and our uh, starting two guard uh, were both sophomore players. Um, and then we had a lot of uh, rookies in the team. So during the finals, when the pressure got a lot higher, I guess it, it also had its, uh, its effects on, on our young players. No? Unlike Letran, they had a lot of veteran players. Eh? So a lot of them were already in their third year, in their fourth year. And... Uh, and uh, I guess they handled the pressure better than we did. But in terms of uh, game plan, in terms of uh, strategies, uh, everything was was uh, was how we did it during the elimination. We did not really change anything. We prepared well. Um, we knew exactly what Letran was going to do. But uh, but during the game we could just not execute well so it uh, it boiled down to to poor execution no? uh, it was very evident that our game during the finals was different parang we parang we were a bit slower we were tense we were very tense and uh, that affected us but still it was a very close series we we could have won, you know, if uh, yeah. with with one or two shots or with with a few breaks. Uh, if you saw in the end, uh, uh, it could have been a foul on on Donald Tanqua, but uh, it wasn't called. So you know, mm. breaks here and there uh, spell the difference also in the game. But we we learned from that. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and that's interesting you say that because uh, when I was watching the game, it's basically what you just said. Uh, either team actually uh, could have won, and um, there's also a controversy about the running priest. Can you uh, give us yeah. a little insight about this running priest <laughs> that we heard here in the U.S.? <laughs> uh, well, uh, there there was a lot of uh, video clips that came out shortly after the the finals. Uh, on social media about uh, Father Vic Calvo, who is the management uh, committee representative of Letran, who rushed to one of the referees, parang signaling, okay, uh, the game is over, the game is over. But it wasn't officially over yet uh, because uh, the referees uh, have not declared the game uh, over. So parang ganon. So there was some controversy. Um, however, uh, we we also uh, asked clearance from the commissioner, but they said that uh, it was basically over because there was no time anymore. It uh, it w just wasn't official because you know it was already crazy in the court. Eh? They started celebrating and then some fans already came. Mm -hmm came inside so it was crazy but but basically there was like uh, less than a second left so tapos na rin kasi all all that run had to do was to inbound the ball and it's over eh. mm -hmm. so, so nothing just... would nothing would have changed okay. um 
especially since the referee did not really make a, a call on the play on Tanqua. If they made a call like a foul, mm -hmm. then it could have been different. But since mm -hmm. they did not make a call, and I clarified that too because it also came out on social media that mm -hmm. the referee was about to make a call, mm -hmm. but uh, Father Vic uh, sort of uh, stopped the referee. I also asked the referees about mm -hmm. it. They said no, that there, there was no call that way. That mm -hmm. the referee was not really going to make a call. He was going to signal Dao when he raised his arm. He was going to signal that that uh, the game is is over. over. Parang ganon. Mm -hmm. So whether, whether that's true or not, we will never know anymore because it came officially, uh, it came directly mm -hmm. from uh, from NCAA officials. Mm -hmm. eh. So yeah. tapos na so, so it's a basically comes down to a matter of just a technicality, right? That's what they're saying. It's just a technicality. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, we've experienced this uh, debacle. Remember, Judah, back in that was oh nine or twenty ten with San Sebastian, and now uh, we're calling this uh, another redemption season for mm -hmm. the Red Lions. Now that probably correct me if I'm wrong, I I, I had this. Four players, Donald Tancua, Clint Dominguez, Soberano, and Evan Nell are now out. Maybe um, you can maybe you can walk us through the replacements and how are they going to fit in with the Red Lions plans for this coming season? Um, we're actually very excited uh, uh, with our new guys. Uh, yes, it's it's true. You mentioned the four players. Plus uh, the other foreign players, si Arnold Noah. So that's a total of five players that are not coming back oh, from no. last year's roster. Um, but we got four of our best players from our high school team. Eh? Si Ryan Amsali, mm -hmm. Justin Sanchez, uh, Yukien Andrada, and Winston Enot. They're all uh, blue chip players from our high school program. Eh? Uh, in fact, uh, two of them are members of the Batangilas team. So we're very excited about them because we know that they're very good players and they're young and they have the size. Because uh, si Ryan Amsali is about 6'3". Uh, si Yukien is about 6'5". Si Justin is about 6'4". So uh, these are very tall players coming in the program. So that's very good for our future. Especially that we no longer have foreign foreign athletes, di ba? So, ano yan eh, palakihan ngayon ng local players. And mm -hmm. uh, I think we have the size. Uh, we also got uh, a few more guys that have the size. Kaya lang, uh, they still need to undergo ano eh, one-year residency. So, may oh, mga transferis tayo. Okay. Yeah. May mga transferis tayo from other schools. So, we're pretty good in terms of... Uh, of our recruitment in terms of the players that are left. Mm -hmm. um, ang crucial na lang, of course, is uh, for us to mature as a team, mm -hmm. to come together and build chemistry. Kasi nga, uh, it's a big challenge now because we haven't really so seen each other for several months no? since since March yata. I think March was the last... Uh, the last uh, workout we had, early March pa yata eh. So we haven't really seen each other kasi everybody went home to their provinces. So when you have a young team like this, when you have a lot of um, new guys coming in, uh, seeing each other, working together is crucial. Mm -hmm. That's why I've been trying to push na magkaroon tayo ng uh, workout even if it's just individual yeah, so, skills yeah so at least we could get to see each other so hopefully yeah. by by january uh, we can be able to do that because i'm really very excited for for our new guys so so you mentioned earlier um letran had a lot of uh, seniors so in this upcoming season are they still favored or do they have a lot of players that graduated um, that they're not the favorite anymore? Uh, how does it look uh, going into the season? Um, well, I think they're still going to be one of the favorites, if not the, the favorite, because uh, they lost two guys 
uh, who are now both in the PBA. Although those two guys are really good, no, they're 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 top scorers last year, but uh, their big guys are all still with the team. Mm-hmm. And uh, Letran is a very big team, especially now without the foreign players. I think they're gonna be the biggest team in terms of size, in terms of height, and. Um, These big guys also have the experience already. Eh? They've been playing for three, four years. So they will have the advantage over us, I think, uh, in the post. Mm. Now, they're going to be quite uh, formidable in the post. Um, but I think in the other positions, especially in the, in the guard positions, I think we have the advantage because we still have... Uh, James Canlas, mm-hmm. uh, and then we have a, a, a really good guy who wasn't able to play last year because of uh, some academic problems. Si Ralph Penuela, who is also a veteran uh, guard, a mm-hmm. transfer from UE, so he's mm-hmm. gonna be able to play. You know, hopefully, if he, if he uh, if if he is eligible, you no, know, if he does well with his studies. Mm-hmm. So I think we're gonna have the advantage, naman, uh, when it comes to the guards and maybe even the small forward position, especially if Calvin of Tana mm-hmm. um, stays, because yeah. we don't know right now what mm-hmm. his plan is. Because he already lost a year. Remember last year after the finals, mm-hmm. he had a chance to apply for the PBA draft, but he chose not to mm-hmm. because he wanted to play for us. Yeah. But because mm-hmm. because now the situation is uh, there's still no final uh, schedule for the NCAA, he might you know he might think about uh, applying for the draft again, mm-hmm. which is uh, in I think in January. Mm-hmm. So we so don't know. One more year, but he might forego his eligibility and jump to yes. the PBA. Yeah, yes. Just... If. Uh, If if by January there's still no clear path for college basketball, then you know he might think that there's a chance that there won't be any college league. So he he would have lost two years, mm-hmm. diba? So so he might opt to apply for the draft, but we don't know yet. If mm-hmm. he stays, then we're very good at the small forward position, because he's the MVP. Mm-hmm. If he leaves. Then uh, we have to train our younger guys. So going back to the question about Letran, I think if we compare the two teams, personally, I think that they will have the advantage in the four and five positions, which are big forward and center. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one and two position, point guard and uh, big guard, maybe we have the slight advantage. The number three position, which is the small forward position, Will depend uh, if Calvin stays or not. Yon. Yeah, I, I heard he had uh, like four three pointers in the uh, Gilas game, uh, the second game that when they played uh, Thailand. So he played really well uh, there. Yeah, he had uh, he had three three point shots in I think maybe less than 10 minutes of play. So that's pretty impressive. Yes. Again, this is the locker room talk show. You can watch these episodes every Friday at 4 p.m. at mybuddies.com. At least show us some love by liking that uh, like button and click subscribe. So, Coach, um, since uh, there's still... We, we can't really for, forecast the future for now because there's COVID and there's actually no vaccine. So, how... And you normally have your training... Overseas, uh, any plans of uh, uh, going through that same process, like training domestically? How, how are you gonna do it? Your practices. Uh, well, right now, really, we're just waiting for the for the approval of the IATF on the on the guidelines set by the Commission on Higher Education. Once that is approved, we're ready to do our bubble training in. Maybe in San Beda, maybe somewhere else uh, in the country that we can do a bubble training. So we have already mm-hmm. prepared the, the guidelines. We have already prepared everything. 
we're just waiting for the final approval. Now, with regard to the overseas training, uh, again, that will depend on the on the situation. If there's if there's a chance that uh, college basketball will will uh, will be allowed to hold tournaments next year, then I think we can do uh, overseas training. However, uh, I don't know if the U.S. will be an option if the U.S. continues to be the number one country <laughs> with the That's most right. cases. Then we, we might look into other options uh, in countries that have less cases. That's possible. Like, for instance, maybe Australia or maybe some mm -hmm. some european countries with uh, with less cases new zealand maybe yeah new zealand is also an option kasi si coach tab uh, can help mm -hmm. us so those are the possibilities of course personally i drug i'd still would want to to train in the states kasi uh, it's like hitting two birds with one stone eh diba we're we're doing training and at the same time um, we get to see potential recruits mm -hmm. so ako my preference is really to train in the states kaya lang syempre um, hopefully things get better over there especially when the vaccines are finally out maybe it's still possible but right now kasi i don't think we will be allowed to to travel there unless uh, you know things get better and now I heard that you guys over there are in a lockdown. Yes. In LA. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. LA, Almost. LA County has uh, the mm -hmm. largest one in California. Um, so interesting when you when you said that. Um, so obviously, training overseas and recruiting. I know the last time you guys went to Miami, but you guys usually come to LA. When you mentioned recruiting, I would imagine LA has a lot more Phil Am players compared to Miami. So I would imagine um, you'd probably prefer to come to LA, given that. You also went the, that time when you guys in, went to Miami. You, you guys also stopped by LA, right? Or just the coaches? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, it was in 2018 when yeah. we trained in in Miami under uh, Coach uh, Gannon Baker, who is a highly mm -hmm. respected uh, trainer, um, and the coaches. Uh, I think Coach Boyet myself. We went to the to to LA to hold some tryouts. Yeah, I, I did see. Them. I, I don't I don't That's remember it. anymore if it was before the Miami training or after. I don't remember anymore. Yeah. But in 2019, the following year, we trained in Las Vegas uh, mm -hmm. with Impact, where we yeah. normally train. Mm -hmm. But uh, before going to Vegas. We also held the tryouts in LA uh, with the help of the Tomakbo League. Ah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I always prefer the West Coast, whether it's LA or Vegas, mm -hmm. so that I can always travel to LA. Because yeah. like what uh, Noel said, most of the potential films are, are in LA. Eh? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we always uh, try to try to make it a point to to visit LA and uh, personally I I like LA talaga I have also family there and uh, a lot of my friends Thank are you. there so yeah so I always make sure that uh, I spend uh, a few weeks in LA eh, before I go to Vegas or or wherever mm -hmm. and of course you guys have been really um, very kind to us you you always make sure to visit us and uh see the players and invite us so that's why we we like it in in LA it just it mm -hmm. just so happened that probably right now the best uh, training facility is in Las Vegas yeah but since naman it's it's just a few hours away mm -hmm. we always you know and the 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 point of entry naman kasi is through LAX LA. eh. yeah yeah, so at least the the players also get to to go to LA even for Mm. A short period. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember. Um, I think it was 2012. Um, a mayor, a mayor came to my house, and we had some barbecue <laughs> with the with the guards. Yes, I grilled. We had some steak. We had some steak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they loved it. So, 
uh, I think Teddy, Teddy was there too. Yeah, uh, he's the one yes. who brought yes. over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there have been uh, there have been uh, a few occasions in, in your house that that I missed. Uh, I think yes. there was one time. One time, kasi I was uh, I was working as a writer for Sports Five. And uh-huh. I was assigned to to cover a UFC event in Dallas. Mm-hmm. I think that was uh, that the time you had a party in in your house, and uh, yeah. most yeah. of the team members were there. I I wanted to go, but you know I had to go to Dallas to cover the UFC event. Eh? So sayang. Oh mm-hmm. no, no worries. Hopefully, okay. hopefully there's next there's time. The future. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh yeah, that's a that's a very curious uh, thing about you, uh, Coach Jude. So aside from basketball, I think you have this uh, developing. Um, passion for uh, UFC. So how how is that like covering for the UFC fight? Uh kasi during that time when I was writing for Sports 5, nobody was really writing uh, about the UFC because uh mm-hmm. you know they they the other writers were assigned different sports. So I volunteered sabi ko since I always watch the UFC naman, I'm quite familiar with uh, most of the fighters. That maybe I can I can write for uh, about UFC articles uh, until somebody who is better comes in, who is more knowledgeable. Uh, kaya lang uh, it was a very short stint also, because I had to uh, I had to quit, and then I went to Manila Times. No, but I also quit two years ago. Na rin eh. I'm not. I'm not writing for any organization right now kasi it's kind of stressful to write eh. I'm sure you know naman Mike, 'di ba, before when when we we used to write for uh, your your organization, it's also very stressful and uh yeah. And so I decided na to stop muna uh, temporarily. I don't know when I will resume, but uh, right now I'm not writing for any organization. But during that time It was my assignment, so I told them that since I'm in the states, naman, mm-hmm. I'm willing to go to Dallas if they can just uh, shoulder my expenses in the hotel and some food. Mm-hmm. But I can actually shoulder my ano eh, yung yung airfare from LA to Dallas. It's okay with me because I'm also excited to go to the event live. Eh. And it was a uh, as a very Great experience for me because as an official media uh, member in the UFC, mm-hmm. they gave me a, a, a really nice seat which was just uh, a few feet apart from the octagon. So oh, it was wow. such wow. a great experience wow. na parang, parang it was worth the, the, the travel expense. So yun lang naman yun. I actually asked them if I could go to, the, to Dallas. To cover that event live, all they all I really asked from the part of Sports Five was to coordinate with UFC so that I can be given a uh, media pass. So okay, naman it all uh, turned out well. Pero hanggang dun lang yun. Na uh, right now, uh, in in case you guys don't know, uh, the UFC events are not available here anymore on free TV. Eh. You have to ano na pay per view na siya. Because before it used to be shown on free TV over uh, Sports 5. Kaya lang, tapos na yung contract na yun eh. We haven't had the uh, UFC for three years na yata. So, yeah. yun. And they have something going on like uh, yung nagiging sikat ngayon sa Philippines. Ay, one ba yan? Is it One Media or? Yeah, One Championship. Oh, one Championship, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. That is based in Singapore eh. So, you know, it's okay. closer to home. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's available on free TV, so oh, we okay. get to watch. We get to watch it That more one. than than the UFC. Yeah. But, siempre, you know, the big names are still in the UFC. Eh. Yeah. So, sayang lang. Mm-mm. Okay. Okay. So, coach, in behalf of Noel Art, and of course our producer Stop Digital Studio, we would like to thank you for your time for being yes. here. Despite the change Thanks. of time zones, yes, thank you. For, it was nice to see you again, Jude. Uh, coach, I, uh, uh, coach, I want to show mm-hmm. you something before we uh, <laughs> we part. 
Does this look familiar? <laughs> yes, yes. Of course, so, yeah. Next time, next time I see you, I want you yeah, to, uh, gonna, yeah. to bring, me, bring me one of these again. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we win the next tournament so that uh, we can have uh, championship shirts again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. We will bring uh, we will bring some uh, over to you guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much appreciated uh, yep. for taking your time uh, visiting with us. Yeah, we'll so, see you again, Coach, when you come by here. So. Mm -hmm. so for all okay. the fans yeah. out there, Thank please you. show Thank us you. love by liking this uh, YouTube channel and subscribing to it. So this is the Locker Room Talk Show. Good night, everybody. <laughs>